Today we'll be installing Debian Linux on VirtualBox using Windows 11 as a host computer. First, we'll want to download Debian Linux from debian.org. There's a convenient download button available. Click on it. It should automatically launch for you, but if it doesn't, you can click on this Debian 12 image and it'll automatically launch. Hit save to where you want to download it to. Just remember the location. One thing I'll mention is you will need an internet connection on the host computer you're installing Debian on in order to proceed with the installation. Now that I've downloaded the ISO, I'm going to launch and use VirtualBox. Start up VirtualBox any way you know. VirtualBox is a virtualization software. Simply put, you can emulate another computer through the use of this software. If I select Tools with that highlighted, I'm going to then select New. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it Debian Linux since that's what I'm installing today. That also gives me a little bit of a benefit because it actually starts to pre-fill things in for me. Either way, make sure to select the type Linux and the version Debian 64-bit since that's the image we just got done downloading. You can change what folder the image is located in. By default, it's going to be in the user's directory under VirtualBox VMs. And we do want to make sure we select an ISO image. That's the one that we just got done downloading. So if we click down on the drop down and hit other, navigate over to the location of your downloaded file. Mine's here in downloads called Debian 12 AMD net inst for net installer. I'm going to hit open. The unintended installation doesn't work too well for me, so I usually skip this step. It typically allows you to install the operating system without even interacting with it, but in most cases, it doesn't end up working or it doesn't give you the proper configuration that you want because you don't get as many options using this method. So with that selected, I'm going to skip over that portion and hit next. In most Linux distributions, at least require two gigs of memory or more right now, two gigs is what's selected by default. If you have more available, it's always better to give a little bit more. My system has plenty. Just try staying in the green here. You can also specify the amount of CPUs. Now this isn't necessarily processors. This is cores on the processor. So mine has up to 16. I can give this way up to about four without starving my system. And I always enable EFI because most modern operating systems Use a UEFI-based BIOS. Therefore, if you're emulating a modern system, you want to enable EFI support. Then I'm hitting next and creating my virtual hard disk right now. I want to give a decent amount of space. This doesn't mean that the space is going to be allocated. I'm giving 120 gigs in my case. You can give it more or less depending on how much total space you have available on your system. Again, don't take away everything from your system, but give a decent amount at the very least 32 gigs, which is what most Linux distributions, including Debian, require for a proper installation. Otherwise, it might actually fail. You can also pre-allocate the full size if you want that space taken up so you don't have to think about it. And it's not growing. You can select this option. I do not like this option because I never end up using the full amount of space and I want it available for my Windows operating system as well. Anyways, with these things, selected, hit next, and then you can go over the overview of information, including disk space, hardware, allocation, and machine settings. Once you're happy with everything, hit finish, and that will create your new Debian Linux virtual machine ready to get powered up. But before we do, smash that like button for me, and let's get to 50,000 subscribers. Subscribe below for more Linux tips and tricks, and we need to hit settings before launching things. Just want to check a few things including in the advanced tab, you can actually enable bi-directional support of sharing clipboards between host and virtual machine. Same with the drag and drop feature. A lot of people like using this feature, so I just want it to be known that it's located here in the general advanced tab. In system, we already have everything we wanted selected. Display, you can up the video memory for better video processing and enable 3D acceleration, again, for better ability on 3D graphics in the virtual machine. You will need to install the guest editions tools in order to use this properly. I'm going to actually enable it and I'm going to give my video memory a little bit more of a buffer here instead of getting so close to the red. Of course, if your system doesn't have many resources, I do not suggest enabling either of those. In the storage space, looks like we got everything ready to go. And in the user interface, I usually check this box that says show in full screen seamless mode. Hit OK. 
and we're ready to start the virtual machine so we can start the process of installing Debian Linux in this virtual machine. Hitting start, we should get a launch. It says powering up the VM now. This is new in VirtualBox 7. The box should show up and it says graphical installation here in the background. Very good. What I'm going to do here is I'm gonna make this full screen and I like scaling just so you're able to kind of see what's going on. So that's when I wanted to do full screen actually. Fantastic, we can see things a little better now. I'm going to select the graphical install method with the arrow keys and give it a few moments to start up. Notice I'm currently having an issue on mine. I'm going to exit out and power off the machine. This may be because I enabled 3D graphics. I'm gonna go back in, depending on the Linux distribution that you're installing, sometimes enabling 3D acceleration may cause issues. So I'm going to deselect that and hit start again. You may get a dialog that says switch. That's just saying that it wants you to switch to the last mode you were in. Go ahead and hit switch. And we're going back to the graphical installation method. Let's see if it'll load up this time. Sadly, I'm still having issues. I'm going to power off the machine once again. The other thing that can be causing issues is if you go to settings in system, you can disable the EFI mode and hit OK. Let's try starting it back up and we'll try the graphical install method once again. All right, with graphical install selected, will it finally work this time? Looks like things are making progressing a little further, which is great. This is a good sign because we're getting the installation. At least we got to go through some troubleshooting techniques there in case your system isn't properly taking either. I'm going to select a language. The default is English, and then I'm gonna hit continue. I'm gonna set my location, United States, set yours, depending on where you live, and hit continue. Which keyboard map do you wanna use? American English works for me, that's the default. I'm gonna hit continue, select yours, and give it a few moments to install some basic components to get ready for the installation of Debian 12. It'll actually go through some network configuration as well and ask you for a host name. You might get an error if you're not connected to the internet. Make sure to get your system connected if you do get an error because you won't be able to keep going on with the installation without one. Anyways, for a host name, I'm gonna type in Savvy Nick. You can type in whatever you, else you want. This is what the rest of the devices and computers on your network will realize this Debian 12 installation as. So that's a name they'll see. I'll hit continue. If you're part of some kind of domain, you can type in the domain name here. Hit continue. Now here you'll be asked for a root password and to re-enter the root password. This is only if you want a, an actual user called root and to separate your root user from your regular user. If you don't want to separate the two, you can just hit continue. If you do, type in your password, confirm it, and you will have a password for root and a separate password for your normal user. I'm gonna hit continue and create my new user called Savvy Nick. I'm gonna hit continue, and that was actually my name, and this is the username. It defaulted to Savvy Nick, that's what I'll keep, and hit continue. Choosing a new password for the user, I'm gonna type my password in and confirm that password. This will be my password for both the root user and this normal user, since I did not separate the two. I'm gonna hit continue and give it a few moments to set up some system settings. I will be asked what time zone I'm in. Select yours, hit continue. We have a few options here, including use the entire disk. Use the entire disk and set it up with LVM, which is logical volume management. Just makes things a little easier to manage later if you wanna resize things. Not typically used for virtual machines. You could, however, to make things even easier in the future. You also have a use entire disk and set up encrypted LVM. This just puts a password over the disk itself and still uses the logical volume management scheme. I'm gonna select a defaulted first option since it's a simplistic virtual machine and hit continue. If everything turned out all right, you'll see this 131 gigabytes of VBox hard disk. It's the only one available because it's the only one that belongs to the virtual machine. And it's the one that we just got done setting up. You can tell because it matches very closely to the mount that we have allocated for our virtual disk. Since this has nothing on it anyway, we just created it, we can hit continue. And we have three different partitioning schemes. The one that's recommended for new users is the one I'm going to select, which is all files in one partition. Hitting continue. Here we're giving an overview of what the system and partitioning scheme is going to look like after we've written changes. So we got a primary or root partition with 130 gigs of EXT formatted space. Then a logical swap partition for memory overflow. That's a gig here. You can actually change these 
When you're ready, you can hit the finish partitioning and write changes to disk. It's just a confirmation hitting continue and one more confirmation, write changes to disks. If you're ready to go, select yes and hit continue. Now we're installing the base system, which may take a little while. Debian Linux is a great stable Linux distribution and is great for things like server and production environments, including people who just want a stable, non-changing environment. Now, one thing that's kind of new here is there's an option to scan the system. Now, Debian asks if you want to actually look and see or add extra firmware. We don't necessarily have any extra firmware. We can always add this after the fact anyway, but since it's a virtual machine, there's not much extra firmware that's needed, perhaps like proprietary graphics card drivers, such as the ones you need for NVIDIA to run properly. But since that doesn't matter here in the virtual machine, I can just hit continue with the no option. Now I'm gonna configure the package manager, select the country that's closest to you. United States works for me. And then select the mirror that you think is closest to you as well. I'm going with the official one, which is dev.debian.org. And you can then type in a proxy if you have one. Here's the way to type it in if you do have one. Otherwise, leave it blank, hit continue. And this will configure our package manager for us. Or ask if we want to join a survey. By default, the option's no. If you do, select yes, hit continue. And this is probably the most important step. Don't skip this one and pay attention because this is what actually selects a graphical user environment for your operating system. And you wouldn't want to end up in just a console or terminal environment. Instead, most people want some kind of a desktop. The default here is GNOME. Notice how that's already selected. Yours might not be. Select something if you want a desktop environment. There are a couple more options at the bottom if you want to install a web server, SSH server, or the standard system utilities. I, at a minimum, would suggest the standard system utilities. If you don't know what a desktop environment is, or what ones look like, especially the ones in this list, you can look it up online, figure out which one you like the look and feel of, and then deselect. Just make sure to only select one to begin with. Otherwise, you're going to have stacked desktops and have to select between them when you first log in. Anyways, I'm going with the GNOME default. Select whichever one you want and hit continue. Now the Debian installation will continue installing. It will take a few minutes because it has to retrieve all the files from the internet and install them on your system. It can take anywhere between five to 10 minutes on this part, unless you have a really slow connection. Okay, on this section, I'm being asked whether or not I want to install Grub, the bootloader, on the, my primary drive. Since I don't have a bootloader on here currently, this is a brand new virtual machine, I do want to install this on my primary drive. So I'll select yes and hit continue. It says enter device manually or select it. I'm gonna select mine since I know it's this VBox hard disk. This is where I want my bootloader to be located. I'm gonna hit continue and that will continue installing Grub on my system. That way my system can start it up properly whenever the installation is finished. Fantastic, it says the installation is complete. We're ready to continue and reboot the system. I'm just gonna hit continue. It's gonna finish up just a few things and actually reboot everything. All right, if we see this, this is good. New Grub is working fine. This is what actually boots us into the system. So I'm going to select Debian GNU Linux. Yours might've timed out and actually went in and selected it for you, not a big deal. We're loading the same thing. And this is a great sign. It's asking, what user do you want to log in with? Savvy Nick was a user I created. I'm going to type in the password I use for that user and press enter. And welcome to your new VirtualBox installation of Debian 12. Congratulations if you made it this far. I do want to talk about some housekeeping here real quick because it might look goofy to you at the moment. I'm going to do control F, which will allow me to switch to the full screen mode. You can also find that in the menu settings. If you go down, hit view, you'll notice this full screen mode. Again, mine was control F to get me in this mode. And it will look a little goofy because the display settings are currently not set right. If you go into display settings, find something that matches your screen the closest. Mine's 1920 by 1080. I'm going to hit apply. Hitting apply. That fixes my screen resolution. Things look fantastic. One other thing I want to check real quick is launching a terminal. I want to make sure that my user that I'm using currently, Savvy Nick, can be logged in as the root user. That way I confirm there's no problems there. I can do that by doing sudo su, typing in the password for Savvy Nick. And as long as I don't get an error and it says root after I've typed in that password, I can use this user 
to elevate privileges to the root user or a super user. Fantastic. Exiting out of there, I'm gonna hit exit. The one other thing I will mention is if you want better support of your system, you're going to have to install VirtualBox. You can do this by going down to the devices and inserting the guest editions CD image. I won't show you how to install that completely because I have a separate video for that. Check it out in the description below. Also comment if you've successfully installed Debian 12 on VirtualBox. We'd love to hear it in the comment section. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux, and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.